That's third quick. Marler jumps third quick at a 13-3-2-9. Checkered flag for Skinner. Does improve but stays fourth fastest at a 13-3-4-3. And Cameron Marler coming across in the Scott Cook 13 car. And he will stay at a 13-4-8-8. His first lap the quickest of his two. All the cars in Group A will set the heat races Heat race lineups for heat race one and two. Group B cars set heat races three and four. There are four heat races that will take the top four finishers to the $20,000 deep fried 75 feature event tonight. Everybody else goes to one of two last chance features, last chance consolation races. As we continue on in my race pass time trials, car number 27, the Denby's J&J Construction, J&J Merchandise, American Racers South, J. Dickens Power 27 for Winchester, Tennessee's Joe Denby, Joe Denby in the 27, and in car number 6 in the Martin Industrial, PMR Aviation, Parker Martin Racing, Longhorn out of Cochrane, Georgia, Parker Martin, Parker Martin in the 6 car. The first lap for Joe Denby is a 13.548. That is seventh fastest. Parker Martin comes across and he moves up to fifth at a 13.362. Both drivers now on their second of two time laps. Checkered flag for Denby. He goes a 13.583, so he'll have to go off his first lap. And Parker Martin, 13.392, also his first lap, the fastest of his two. My race pass time trials available on Google Play or the App Store. If you're in the grandstands, you still have time to download My Race Pass and you can follow all the live timing and scoring for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series, not only tonight, but all season long and uh, all the just about all the racetracks and series across the country, literally hundreds of races and racetracks utilizing My Race Pass. It is the official timing and scoring app of the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Our next car on the racetrack is the 2020 Deep Fried 75 winner in the J&J Construction Southeast Auto Direct. United Truck Driving School, Russell Barnett Kia. Car number J8, it's Winchester, Tennessee's Jaden Frame, Little Frame in car J8. And in the Schaefer's Oil, Zach Bunning Graphics, True Green, Live Life Outdoors, Advanced Machine and Tool, 99 out of Mayfield, Kentucky. It's Hunt Gossam making his Hunt the Front Series debut. Both drivers complete their first lap in Jaden Frames. The first lap is a 13-1-1-6. Fastest overall. Gossam is tipped quick on lap number one. And lap number two slows down a tad bit for Frame at a 13-2-3-2. And Hunt Gossam comes across at a 13-6-6-0. But the first lap for Jaden Frame is fastest overall so far in my race past time trials at a 13 6 uh, I'm sorry, 13 116. 13 116 for Little Frame. Jaden Frame finished third with the series here back in July. Here's a driver that led the majority of that race until uh, the hood came up and obstructed his view. Still one of the craziest things I've ever seen in car number 16 out of Fort Payne, Alabama in the Accor Steel. JNR Excavating Grove Pediatric Therapy. First Bank of Alabama. Rocket with a Durham race engine. It's the 2019 Deep Fried 75 winner, Sam Seawright. Sam Seawright and in car number 91 at Signal Mountain, Tennessee. It's the Andy Deal Trucking Masters built for Heath Heinemann. Heath Heinemann, a 13-4-0-9, seventh quick on lap one for Seawright. Heinemann's going to come across, and he will go tenth quick at a 13-4-8-5. See what Seawright can do here on lap number two, and he'll have to stick there as it's a 13 13- 6-2 for Seawright. And a 13-5-2-9 for Heath Heinemann. So both drivers' uh, first lap are the faster of their two laps. That seems to be the theme here early in Group A of my race pass time trials for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Again, half the field in Group A, the other half in Group B. 20 cars making up Group A here as they will... Set the lineups for heat races one and two. Group B sets the lineups for heat races three and four. Continuing on here with car 44D out of Salem, Alabama, is the current driver sitting fifth in series point standings. That is Dalton Cook. Dalton Cook aboard the Riverside Window and Door. Gray's Mobile Service, TMT Utilities Grading, Mar Hills Mafia Entry, and also on the racetrack out of Milton, Florida. 
in the Langenfelder Mechanical Contractors Base Race Fuels trading paint. Car number 10, it's the flying Floridian Joseph Joyner. Joseph Joyner in the 10, third in series point standings. First lap for Dalton is a 13-6-1-6. 13-6-1-6, Dalton. Cook and Joe Joyner goes fourth quick on lap number one at a 13-2-3-5. 13-2-3-5. He improves on lap number two, does Dalton Cook. Cook goes up to 13-5. And so does, wow, so does Joseph Joyner. Top of the charts at a 13-1-1-2 for Joseph Joyner. Fast time overall move over Jaden Frame as Joseph Joyner just went to the top of the charts. What a lap there. Dalton Cook's first lap, uh, rather second lap, times in at a 13th fastest overall. Southeast Crane and Hoist of Pell City, Alabama, is current, uh, also providing a $200 fast time award. So just got that handed to me, thanks to one of the local sponsors here at Duck River, $200 from Southeast Crane and Hoist. Right now, it's Joseph Joyner as our next qualifier. It's on the racetrack in car 38, and it's Dylan Tidmore out of Blinco, Alabama, the Tidmore Construction, AG Excavating, CK Reed Trucking, Save More Commercial Laundry 38, and how about car number six of Clay Harris out of Jupiter, Florida, the Wilkinson Farms, Done Right Construction, Impact Electrical Services, Rescue Metal Framing, six cars. So Tidmore and Harris. Harris goes 13-3-2-9. Do apologize for that little bit of technical difficulty there on the PA system. If you heard that, we do apologize. Our next qualifier on the racetrack, everybody chasing... Dylan Tidmore, who went 13 47 while that was going on there, is Christian Hanger. Christian Hanger in the 29 in the Ballard's Excavation, Alexander Produce, Capital Electric, Mickey Septic, 29 out of Winchester, Tennessee. And Jason Riggs in the Shepherd Riggs Racing, Riggs Drilling Solutions, True Timber Camo, Valvoline, Longhorn out of College Grove, Tennessee, Jason Riggs in the 81. So Hanger goes 12th fastest, and Riggs comes in at 18th fastest overall. I believe we have two cars left here in Group A of my race pass time trials. All right, still waiting our final two qualifiers here of Group A qualifying for my race past time trials. Dylan Tidmore at a 13-0-4-7. So I believe uh, a problem there on the 29 for Hanger. Maybe either didn't get all his laps or a transponder didn't pick up on his second lap. I believe that is the case as Hanger's 29 car. Uh, a, again, Ballard's Excavation, Alexander Produce, Capital Electric, Mickey Septics, Hanger's Hardwood Flooring, and Hanger Farms on the 29. So see where Hanger goes ninth quick at a 13-3-6-1 there on a second lap. I believe uh, per race control, they're telling me there at the uh, second lap, I don't think picked up. And this is our final two cars of Group A, My Race Pass Time Trials. Again, Dylan Tidmore to 13047, Joseph Joyner, Jaden Frame, and Dale McDowell. Car 27, it's the 2018 Southern All-Star Champion in the Elite Roll-Off. 
Scott's Auto Bodies, Leading Edge Graphics, Dyson Group, TAL Motorsports Entry out of Fayetteville, Tennessee, Jay Scott, and the driver who picked up his first career super late model win last week in the Southern All-Stars down in Hornwald, Tennessee. It's the Zippy's Autos, John John's Timber, Joe Lift Enterprises, CFR Performance, Parts and Fabrications. Six, it's Oakley Johns. Oakley Johns in the C6. These drivers completing their first lap now on their second lap. Oakley Johns a 13-280, that's seventh fastest. And then coming across at a 13-872 is Jay Scott. Jay Scott, who goes 20th fastest out of the cars in Group A. So that completes Group A of my race pastime trials. You've seen half of them. It's Dylan Tidmore who will lead heat race number one to green, and Joseph Joyner, who will lead heat race number two to green, as it's Tidmore, Joyner, Frame, McDowell, Crane, Johns, Harris, Marler, Skinner, and Hanger, your top ten. As Group A has wrapped up again, thanks to Southeast Crane and Hoist of Pell City, Alabama, providing $200 for the Fast Time Award, uh, one of the local sponsors here with the Duck River Raceway Park, jumping in here at the last minute to throw up $200. They see this crowd, they see this car count we have, and the sponsors uh, start stepping up to the plate as uh, we have a monster crowd here for the largest race in history. Still a line of folks trying to get in to the Duck River Raceway Park. All right, Group B, time trials for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series and my race past time trials. This driver was fast last night. He turned a lot of heads. This is only his second attempt ever at a super late model star, and he's a modified standout from Ohio, Hamilton, Ohio, to be exact in the Kevin and Kathy Kuss owned 33. It is Dallas Miller, OTM Fabrication, Morris Brothers Construction, Save More Commercial Laundry, and Blackberry Hill sponsors for Dallas Miller. Miller's going to come across in his first lap. He is a decent one, 13.746. And how about car number two, Caden Mullinax in the CRM Motors, Blue Earth Media, uh, Media, all of the race engines, two out of Birmingham, Alabama. He comes in at a 13.374, 13.374. Miller sl- improves a bit to a 7.22 on lap number two. But Mullinax goes a 13.374 on lap number one, is currently the time that everybody is chasing here in my race past time trials for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series presented by Sweet Victory Apparel Company. Dylan Tidmore's fastest lap overall so far is a 13.047. He'll have to hold on and see if anybody from the B group here can eclipse that time. Otherwise, he'll be collecting the $200 from Southeast Crane and Hoist. In the JCM Motorsports, Torco Advanced Lubricants, Yellow Hammer Design and Construction, Top Notch Custom Concepts, Neon Bubbles Car Wash, 19, it's your series point leader, Will Harrington out of Hawkinsville, Georgia, and the Curl Properties. S&D Plumbing and Electrical, Hitson Properties, Brinkley Farms, 13, it's Scott Cook from Shelbyville, Tennessee, Harrington, second quick on lap one at a 13.665. Scott Cook not picking up in the 13 car, I do not believe, so checkered flag is out for Will Harrington, and he goes to the top of the Group B charts at a 13-3-5-9, a 1-3-3-5-9 for Will Harrington. Scott Cook did not pick up on either lap, I do not believe, so they'll have to check the transponder. If he does not have a transponder, I do not believe he will be given the opportunity to requalify, but if he does have a transponder, they'll swap it out and should get him back out on the racetrack. Our next qualifier on the racetrack is car number nine out of Woodstock, Georgia, the Crawl Heating and Air. Carrier, Westmoreland Trucking, Kaiser Manufacturing, nine car. It's Jason Croft, Jason Croft in the nine. And out of Cartersville, Georgia, the Millwood Plumbing, Competition Racing and Equipment, Machine Construction Company, Grades Mobile Service, 31. It's Tyler Millwood, Tyler Millwood. So we have a three-time Dixon Speedway Track Champion and Jason Croft and a... The 2017 Ultimate Super Late Model Series champion in Tyler Millwood. Millwood goes 
Millwood's 13-207 is now top of the charts. All right, so also a problem on the Croft transponder and uh, not sure what the issue there is for Croft or for Cook. They tried to give Croft another opportunity here, but it's still not picking up. We'll continue on with qualifying with Ronnie Cooper Trucking and Dirt Work, Wilson Heating and Air, car number 10 out of McKenzie, Tennessee. It's Ronnie Cooper. Ronnie Cooper in the 10 car. And in the 212, he's second in series point standings coming into tonight. The Zippies Autos, Holmes Towing and Salvage, Mars Brother Construction, Randall Chup Race Consulting, 212. It's the 2013 Deep Fried 75 winner from Florence, Alabama, Josh Putnam. Josh Putnam in the 212. Both these drivers taking their first lap. Matt Cooper goes a 13-3-9-1. And Josh Putnam goes a 13-3-3-2. That's second quick for Josh Putnam. Everybody chasing Tyler Millwood. See what Putnam can do on lap number two. He does improve, but it's not good enough to go top of the charts. It's a 13-3-2-1 for Josh Putnam. Tyler Millwood, Josh Putnam, Will Harrington, Caden Mullinax, and Matt Cooper are your top five here in Group B of My Race Pass Time Trials. Again, the Group B cars will set the lineups for Heat Race 3 and 4, and I believe there may be a report of some debris on the racetrack as track officials are headed out to check the speedway. believe with the drivers not picking up the track officials may have been checking for a transponder on the racetrack I'll we'll have to see if that uh, was indeed what they were looking for but nonetheless we'll continue on with qualifying for car number F1 good to have him back with the tour Hall of Problems sidelined him from being able to compete here on July 2nd in the Freeman Plumbing Shelton Trucking Colton Farms Racing Keith Freeman on the F1 it's Commerce Georgia's Peyton Freeman Peyton Freeman in the F1 and in car number two in the three trades consultants, Jason McCullers Properties, Randy Polk Holmes. Entry out of Milton, Florida, Bo Slay. Bo Slay, one of our Aces Renovation Rookie of the Year contenders. Hold on to it, Bo Slay. How did he not hit the wall there? Peyton Freeman's lap on a second attempt at a 13-2-3-2 is second quick. Second quick for Peyton Freeman. Bo Slay goes seventh quick on his second lap at a 13-5-9-9. So being told that Scott Cook had a transponder uh, that was not working. He did have one mounted on the car, but apparently some issues with that. So he should be coming out for uh, his now second attempt at his only timed laps here for Scott Cook. So hate that for Scott. Uh, hopefully this, this run is maybe a little bit better, or he, at least he feels like it's a little bit better. You hate when equipment malfunction 
uh, causes you to have to redo qualifying. But nonetheless, it's only fair that Scott get his opportunity. So the girls' property 13 car comes to green. Also on the racetrack is car number 73. Good to have Evan Ellis from Plantersville, Mississippi, back with the tour, the Ellis Welding. Power Wash Store, Ponder's Equipment, Four Seasons Equipment Company, 73 is on the racetrack. As Scott is picking up, it's 13.786 on his first lap. And Evan Ellis, a 13.346, goes fourth fastest. Good lap there for Ellis. Scott Cook, second lap, moves him up to eighth at a 13.475. Ellis up the racetrack a tad bit, slows down on lap number two. It's a 13.435, 13.435. Everybody chasing Tyler Millwood in in group B at a 13.207. But Dylan Tidmore's fastest lap in group A is a 13.047. So he would be your fastest overall in my race pass time trials if nobody from this B group can eclipse a 13.047. But the time that matters in Group B is 13.207, and these next two drivers will try to see what they can do on the scoreboard is car number 44. That's Grayson Brewer out of Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, in the H&H Lumber Prime Automotive, Heritage Automotive, Summertown, Metals, 44 car. And the 16 is Daniel Miller. Daniel Miller and the Miller Race Engines, Landon Miller Racing, Miller's Body Shop, Jeff Woods Racing, Paul Miller Auto Service, Zippy Auto's 16 car. Grayson Brewer goes 10th quick on his first lap at a 13.564, 13.564. And Daniel Miller on his second lap goes eighth fastest at a 13.417. It's Tyler Millwood, Peyton Freeman, Josh Putnam, Evan Ellis, Will Harrington, fifth fastest in Group B for the defending race winner here with the series. The last time we were here on July the 2nd, it's the last time the series raced at a month summer break, allowing our drivers the opportunity to take some family vacation and also uh, race elsewhere with some of the other races and tours that were going on in July. Uh, Some of those drivers did that. Some of those drivers took the opportunity to uh, thoroughly work through their car and look for uh, ways to improve their speed on the month off. Coming to green in car number 90 in the 1250 package store, Advanced Logistics, Tommy Surrett Trucking, Goat Farm Posse, Rittman Brothers Racing, Jay Dickens, Rocket Chassis, out of Columbus, Mississippi, Brian Rickman. And in the 157, it's the Ronnie Delk owned Delk Equipment, Cam Elmano Salvage, Petroff Towing, Cornet Longhorn for Whitfield, Tennessee driver Mike Marler in the 157. Rickman tenth fastest at a 13.533. Mike Marler third quick on lap number one and 13.297. Rickman comes across. He cannot improve on his first lap. And the 2018 World of Outlaw champion Mike Marler takes the second, uh, his second lap and goes to the top of the charts at a 13. 13- one nine two fast time in Group B so far for Mikey Marler. Mike Marler in the one fifty seven. Really good second lap there. He went from eighth to first on his second pass there. Mike Marler now a thirteen one nine two. Our next driver on the racetrack in the H&A development, Jordan Trotter, commercial real estate, Boswell Oil, 2X Motorsports, Plymouth's powered warrior out of North Augusta, South Carolina, John Henderson. John Henderson, sixth in the series points coming in, and the 15-year-old driver out of St. Augustine, Florida, the Mills Concrete, Boswell Oil, Stanton and Amanda Mills on Black Diamond race car. It's Trey Mills, Trey Mills, fourth in series point standings, leading Aces Renovation, Rookie of the Year standings, John Henderson got way up the racetrack there on his first lap and then shuts it down to the infield, leaving Trey Mills the only car on the track. Trey was the fastest qualifier overall here in July. He goes a 13-4-1-2, ninth quick on lap number one. Checkered flag is out for Trey Mills as he works off of turn four goes to fourth fastest 13293 a 13 
2-9-3 for Trey Mills. You got to look there at John Henderson, who has a flat right rear on the 2X car. John Henderson's qualifying effort not going the way he wanted it to go. It's a flat right rear. No time for the 2X. He will tag the tail. He will tag the tail there of what should be, I believe, the fourth heat race. So he actually hit the wall there in turn four. I missed that there. That is the blind spot at the very top of turn four here in the announcer's booth. So we'll continue on with our next two qualifiers. In the 66, that is Donald Johns of Summertown, Tennessee, the Johns Timber, Kale Finland Racing, Stewart Farm 66, and Chase Oliver in the Chase Oliver Tire and Service, LLC, Stucky Enterprises, the Rusty Nail 5 car out of Rainbow City, Alabama. Donald Johns goes 15th fastest at a 13.607, and Chase Oliver goes 13.612. That is 16th fastest. These Both these drivers coming across to take their checkered flag lap, see what they can do. As we have one car remaining here, they'll stay 15th and 16th respectfully. Out of the pit area, dwarf cars and front-wheel drives. You should be lined up for your qualifying and hot laps. Front-wheel drives and dwarf cars. You should be in place now. If not, get there as quick as you possibly can. Final car left to requalify will be the nine of Jason Croft, transponder mounted properly on the car, but uh, apparently an issue. And he will be the last car to qualify here in Group B. Mike Marlers, 13192 is the time to beat. He did that on his second lap, so Croft will see if he can improve. They'll come to the green flag in the Croft heating and air carrier. Sponsored Capital Race Car, Woodstock, Georgia, three-time Dixie Speedway, super late model champion. We'll see the white flag this time by again. Dylan Tidmore's 13047 fastest overall in Group A. And Mike Marler's 13192 fastest here in Group B. A 13885, 13885 for Jason Croft there on lap number one. See what he can do on lap number two. Rookie of the Year contenders as he goes a 13-9-5-2, 13-9-5-2 for Croft. So that will conclude my race pass time trials for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series, Super Late Models. Your fastest time here in Group B is Mike Marler at a 13-1-9-2, but the fastest driver overall at a 13-0-4-7 is is Dylan Tidmore, Dylan Tidmore out of Glencoe, Alabama, in the Tidmore Construction, ANG Excavating, CK Reed Trucking, Save More Commercial Laundry, J. Dickens Powered Longhorn Chassis, and he is on the front straightaway as we are just about set to get a quick word. Again, fastest driver overall here in My Race Pass. Time Trials, My Race Pass, the official live timing and scoring provider of the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Download it on Google Play or the App Store. Not only do you have uh, live timing and uh, scoring offered. You also have driver website development, race promoter website development, race management systems, online ticket sales, apparel, and more. So we'll throw things down real quickly to Joshua Joyner, who is grabbing a word with our fast qualifier, Dylan Tidmore. Joshua, take it away. All right, Dylan Tidmore, uh, I'm just going to ask you, how are you feeling right now after laying... How are you feeling right now after going fat? How are you feeling right now after going fast time and qualifying? Chance to start up front here if you get through your heat race for a twenty thousand to win deep fried seventy five tonight. I'm pretty pumped up. This would be a huge deal for everybody involved with me. Uh, but uh, still a long way to go in the night. There's a lot of racing left to do. But just thankful for everybody that's helps gets me here up and down the road. Tidmore Construction, ANG Excavating, CK Reed Trucking, Dalton's here with All Foam Solutions. Save more commercial laundry. Just everybody that puts their hands in on this thing, all my crew, I can't thank them enough for all they do. Uh, uh, like I said, it would be a pretty cool deal if we got it done tonight, but still a long way to go. There you go. Dylan Tidmore comes up to uh, Duck River Raceway Park, lays down fast lap. He'll uh, get a cash bonus here, and he'll be starting from the front row of a heat race coming up with a chance to start on the, uh, up front for a $20,000 potential victory here tonight. 
That cash bonus, $200, courtesy of Southeast Crane and Hoist of Pale City, Alabama. Congratulations to your fastest driver overall in my race pass time trials for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Deep Fried 75 here at the Duck River Raceway Park, Glencoe, Alabama's Dylan Tidmore. You know, the secret is, is J.C. Crockett's walking around the pit area down there of the 38 car. Maybe that's the secret. I know Dylan's been trying to get him out here for a long time. So that wraps up the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series qualifying. The next time you see him on the racetrack, it'll be for four eight-lap heat races races where the top four will transfer to the feature. Joe, we are moving, my friend. Uh, you, you alluded to it earlier, some uh, um, unfavorable forecast as we get later in the evening. So they are really uh, trying their best to move the show along. So things were rocking and rolling. Uh, we've got a lot of good action here tonight oh. at the Duck River Raceway Park. Oh, it's only going to get better. Coming up next, we should have hot laps of qualifying for our express pull and save front wheel drive cars. And then hot <laughs> Hot Wheels. Boy, I'm telling you, you know, there's a reason I don't do this professionally anymore. How about hot laps of qualifying for our dwarf cars? And then we'll be going on to heat races. And I'm telling you, I am so looking forward to these hunt the front heat races. Just two of them. But, you know, nine, or four of them. I'm sorry, because you got four of them. Eight cars. And here's the thing, John. Whether or not you make this show sense on how you do in those heat races. I'll tell you what, Joe, just watching qualifying, I mean, I, I am pumped. The way these guys are hanging it out is unbelievable. And when we get them all out there, it's going to be quite the show. But you're right. Man, those qualifying races, they're at a premium. you got to finish up front or, or you're headed to the house. Let's go into hot laps and qualifying for our front wheel drive cars and see how these guys can make see how these guys can make it work here. Twenty seven of Andy Pugh leading them out. That looks like the twenty of Billy Bain. And still waiting on the transponders to respond. There we go. Andy Pugh fast on his first lap at a seventeen six seventy seven. Billy Bain running that old Rainbow Warrior yeah. paint scheme. We don't see that in a while. Pretty cool. So out of that first group, it'll be Pew, Bain, and Gator Ginther, the three fastest. Eight cars set in this division tonight. We'll see how they come out. Well, if you can't be named Ricky Bobby, I guess Gator's probably the second best. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty cool name for a race car driver. There is potential, ladies and gentlemen, for some weather. Uh, we don't think it will last very long. Do need your help down near turn four. You got to get away from the fence. Please move back behind the black barrels. Folks, if there's somebody down there that can give me a hand and remind those young people they have to be back away from the fence. Behind the black barrels. Once again, behind the black barrels, or we'll let security figure it out. Good to see John Loki back in the 65. He's fourth fastest earlier, and he's jumped up. He is now fastest. 17, 16, 750, big lead there. As let's see, it's, well, it keeps moving. Man, these cars are getting quicker. Klein at the top now. And Devin Joyner, John Loki, Andy Pugh. Jimmy Bain falls back to fifth. Gunner goes to sixth. And Kane and Gwynn in the 47 will go down as seventh fastest at the moment.
Up next are dwarf cars as they will hot lap and qualify here. Joe, a great division of these dwarfs always. Uh, Joe Bond and Nick Winsett have been the class of this field here locally. And we'll see if anybody has anything for them tonight. As right now, Tyler Pinnell, fast lap, 1565. Matthew Fanning, Matt Lipman, Noah Hemlick, Hunter Defoe, and Jason Hall all out to qualify. Good field tonight, 12 cars set to go. This is the first half as they do their qualifying. After our pre-race ceremonies, of course, we've got heat races for Hunt the Front, United Truck Driving School factory stocks, the NMCR LLCs, the Bubba's Bout Broke 602 late models. That's a, and that may not go. That uh, that was going to be a B main, but uh, maybe we've got enough holes for it. But then you've got the Hunt the Front B main. A quick intermission, and we'll get after it one more time. All right, our second half, Blake Hastings in the 12-in. He's another one who has been really strong this year. Have to keep an eye on him. As the top three of Pinnell, Fanning, and Lippman. All wait to see what happens. Joe Bond up to sixth in this qualifying run. Wins it. Just ninth fastest. I think he would call that a little disappointing on that first lap. Of course, then he turns the second fastest lap on his second one. So shut up, Joe. Well, I, you know, I, I mentioned these guys before they got out of here. Boom, one and two right to the top. So Bond and wins it. Like I said, they have shown the speed the here. Yeah. So, uh, these other guys have their work cut out for them. But, yeah, Joe Bond, fast qualifier there within the 44 at a 14.93. Nick wins it, a 15 flat. Then it's Tyler Pinnell in third. Well, as we get ready to get started, folks, I want to remind you, I've just been told there are less than 200 ducks left, John. Now, let's go through this for the folks who got here late. Two bucket duck, and the ducks are presented, they're, they're supplied to us by R&R &R Recovery and Towing. Each duck has a number on it, and if you're holding the duck and we draw the number, you win a prize. Now, there's about 50 prizes sitting out here that we're going to give away a little bit later on, <laughs> yes. and that 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 pile keeps growing. So 50 may not be the right number. It may go up from there. But the best part of the two bucket duck program is proceeds go to improve our, excuse me, playground for our youngsters back here over uh, off of turn number one. So even if you don't win a prize, you're a winner because you're helping the kids out. That's, I, you know, that makes my heart happy to say it to you. Already we've sold 800. Joe, that's $1,600 toward that playground, man. And that's, that's amazing. We appreciate you guys so much. But yeah, if you don't have one, go get go get you a duck. Two bucks. I mean, take a chance, man, because there yeah. are some great prizes uh, that we're going to give away later. But just an awesome deal they do there, you know. And 
you know, again, Russell and Angie both. It, Joe, it seems every time I come here, there is some new improvement. They're always working on this track and such great owners to work with and putting their heart and soul in this place. And it shows tonight with this crowd. Oh, absolutely. So. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say one more time how much we appreciate you coming out tonight, especially those. Some of you guys were here so early. Uh, of course, you knew you had to be here early to get uh, to get uh, <laughs> to get a good seat. So, this is just a great place. Again, we thank you for coming out. And by the way, sometimes we forget to tell the drivers and the car owners and the crew chiefs and the crews and the families that support these drivers. We always remember to thank the fans. But, John, we got to thank the guys that are on what we call the other side of the fence, those who have traveled to be here, those who are with us every week. Sometimes we don't say thank you enough for what they do for being a part of Duck River Raceway Park. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. What a what a great facility, a great support team. You know, thank these track workers, these concession workers, everybody that puts their heart and soul in this place. Uh, it, it's just fantastic. And like I said, this crowd is proof. And, man, I am just amazed at the people here. And they are in for a treat. There's no doubt about it. Speaking of treats, there's plenty of treats left uh, down on uh, – down on the fun concourse, as I call it, the concession stand obviously <laughs> is open. Everything from barbecue to burgers to hot dogs to pizza, uh, French fries. They've got literally everything down there that you could possibly want. Now, also, you've got down the back, we'll start in turn four. You've got Jim and Bonnie's uh, Nuts Company. they got pecan pies that will absolutely knock your teeth out of your, out of your head. I mean, those things are so good. Uh, coming back this way, you've got all the merch tri merchandise trailers, plus we've got pork skins, freshly done. Right here, you've got uh, sun drop cake, and you've got uh, snow cones, and that great deal tonight, barbecue. Barbecue ribs, 15 bucks, get you ribs, fries, beans, and a roll. I mean, it it's, get you it's all back there. And, guys, while I got your attention here, real quick, we've got uh, people still filing into this race, Joe. So, in the grandstands, if you guys can maybe squeeze in together, if you see somebody and you got a seat available, flag them down because we're standing room only and uh, just want to be considerate and try to give everybody a seat here. So, we're about to get underway with uh, pre-race ceremonies. And speaking of free race ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, tonight something special for you. If you would, and turn your attention to the tower top here, as we call it, as uh, John Nix has a special pre race for us tonight. John? Well, thank you, Joe Williams. Race fans, a lot of you may recognize this man, Brother Joe Nelms. From the Family Baptist Church in Lebanon. Joe, your first time here. What's your impression so far? Man, this is exciting. It has been 15 years since I've been at a dirt track race. And uh, gosh, I, I didn't realize how much I missed it till I got out here tonight, but it will not be my last. What a show we've already seen just in qualifying. I can't wait till the race gets started. Absolutely right. So, if you're not standing already now that we ask you to stand, remove your hats as Brother Joe delivers our invocation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this awesome track tonight. Lord, it was in the book of Genesis that we saw that man was first formed from the dust of the earth into your image, and to the dust we have returned tonight to watch these good old boys and good old girls get it on on this racetrack this evening. I pray you'd give us good weather. I pray you'd give them grip in their tires, horsepower under their hood, Give them the courage and the nerves they need to wheel these machines around this track. And may each and every fan in attendance, Lord, we thank you for this crowd. May each and every one of them race to their feet and cheer these folks on tonight to Victory Lane. In Jesus' name, boogity, 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 amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. Appreciate you as always. Folks, please remain standing. Now we have national recording artists. And Marshall County resident Scott Southworth. Scott is going to deliver our national anthem. Scott. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave all right ladies and gentlemen and that means one thing it is time to go racing we're ready now for the Hunt the Front Heat Races and the man who will tell us all about it. And goodness knows he's as good as they get. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Travis Scott. Thank you very much, Joe. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Amen. God bless the United States of America. We are ready for Dirt Track Bank Heat Race number one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret there is weather approaching the super late models. We appreciate them being there, getting turned around as quickly as possible. Heats two through four need to in stage and lanes, gentlemen. It is go time. Inside of row number one, your fast qualifier, Dylan Tidmore, Gazden, Alabama, in the 38. Outside of him is the 2020 Deep Fried 75 winner, Jaden Frame. Jaden Frame in the J8. Panama City, Florida's Ryan Crane in the 10C car. On the inside of row number two with Clay Harris out of Jupiter, Florida, in car number six alongside. Brad Skinner in car number 17 out of Spring Hill, Tennessee, with Milledgeville, Georgia's Parker Martin in the sixth junior outside of row number three. Shelbyville, Tennessee's Chase Walls and Signal Mountain's Heath Hindman make up row number four with Dalton Cook from Salem, Alabama and Jason Riggs from College Grove, Tennessee making up the final row of Dirt Track Bank Heat Race number one for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Four heat races, eight laps in distance. The top four will advance to the deep fried $75, $20,000 on the line here tonight for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series presented by Sweet Victory Apparel Company. And we are ready. The lights are blinking. They go out here on heat race number one. The Hunt the Front Dot TV production crew bringing you some great shots and camera angles of tonight's racing action. And we are ready for heat race number one. Dylan Tidmore and Jaden Frame going to lead this field to green. Race director Todd Hutto on the mic ready to tell these guys to light the fire. And they do so out of turn number four. Dirt track paint heat race number one is green. They'll battle off into turn number one with Jaden Frame with the early advantage. Again, Frame came on strong late charge from the about 10th position to the top three in the closing laps of our July race here. He will lead lap number one of their track bank heat races here for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. Fast qualifier Dylan Tidmore falls back to second. Clay Harris is third. Parker Martin's in fourth and outside looking in is a ferocious battle of Heath Hyman, Ryan Crane, Brad Skinner, Jason Riggs, Chase Walls, and Dalton Cook rounding out this heat race. Three laps will be completed by Jaden Frame as he works off of turn four, this time by Dylan Tidmore in tow. Clay Harris making the haul from Jupiter, Florida, rides third. And Parker Martin is the fourth and final transfer as he'll see the cross flags. This time by, it'll be halfway down, halfway done here in Dirt Track Bank, heat race number one. Frame using that outside line, Tidmore on in the middle. That's kind of where everybody's running. Frame is just a little bit higher up the racetrack than the rest of the field. These guys uh, riding behind Frame may want to take note of that. The guys kind of in the back of the pack are doing so. As you see Frame now with five laps complete, it'll be two laps remaining. This time by for Jaden Frame, Dylan Tidmore, Clay Harris and Parker Martin, the way they run. This is a fast, fast racetrack here. You see the battle on your screen as Jason Riggs in the 81 car looks for the inside of 
Rookie of the Year contender Ryan Crane. They are side by side. That is for the sixth position as Crane takes the white flag and sets sail off of turn number two. He's just got to hit his marks this time, and all will be well. He'll look to hopefully lead this field to green. More on that in just a moment as Jaden Crane in the J8 takes dirt track bait. Heat race number one. Crane takes the win, followed by Dylan Tidmore, Clay Harris. Parker Martin, Heath Heineman outside looking in. Ryan Crane finishes sixth. Jason Riggs seventh. And Brad Skinner, your eighth and final finisher. Winning heat race number one for the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series presented by Sweet Victory Apparel Company and Car J8 out of Winchester's Tennessee. It's Jaden Frame. Jaden Frame will go to the Jericho Transmissions redraw aboard his J&J Construction Southeast Auto Direct United Truck Driving School Russell Burnett Kia Capital Race Car with a big kill race engine under the hood. Dylan Tidmore finishes second, Clay Harris third, and Parker Martin Jr. your fourth and final transfer out of Dirt Trek Bank Heat Race number one. Everybody else will head to the last chance race. The second heat race is about set to roll on. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're used to watching the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series, you're used to a post-heat race winner victory interview where the Jericho Transmissions redraw takes place. The heat race winners will redraw from one to four to determine their starting position. With weather approaching, we've decided to forego that. The redraw will take place here in just a little while, uh, but it will not take place live on camera, so we can roll in heat race number two. And they are on the racetrack. Inside of row number one out of Milton, Florida, third in series point standings is the Flying Floridian, Joseph Joyner. Outside of him, out of Chickamauga, Georgia, the Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell, the Dirt Late Model Hall of Famer. In the 17M, Oakley Johns, fresh off his first career win last week in the C6, first career super late model win, and Cameron Marler of Winfield outside of him. Christian Hanger and Sam Seawright make up row three. Jamie Elam, Joe Denby make up row four. Hunt Gossam and Jay Scott rounding out the field as the field crawls down the back straightaway. We are coming to green, this time by Dirt Track Bank Heat Race number two. Hunt the fronts, Joseph Joyner and the Dirt Late Model Hall of Famer, Dale McDowell, bring this field to green. They race to turn one. Joyner with the early advantage. McDowell peeks back underneath. He'll take a look. They are door to door for the race lead in turn three. McDowell on the bottom. Joyner right there. Again, McDowell led every lap in the Ray Cook promoted spring national race here on Memorial Day weekend. He's on the bottom side of the racetrack, putting pressure on Joseph Joyner. Got a heck of a battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Oakley John's in third. Sam Seawright in fourth. And right around the bottom of the racetrack is Cameron Marler in the 13th. Got battles all over this racetrack here on Dirt Track Bank Heat Race number two. Down the back straightaway, Joseph Joyner. We'll work off of turn four, continue to lead. Dale McDowell, Oakley John, Sam Seawright, Christian Hanger. Outside looking in is Christian Hanger. And the caution flag is flying here on the front straightaway. Got a car well off the pace. It's Cameron Marler. Cameron Marler's 13M with a flat left front on the 13M car. So he'll head out of here and have to get ready for a last chance race. The Hoosier Race Tire B mains that will be coming up here in just a little while. Joseph Joyner leads the series with four heat race wins in 2023. He has yet to scratch across his first feature win on the first year tour that bears the name Hunt the Front with the brand on the side of the 10 car. Joyner looking good for his fifth uh, heat race win, but he's got to hold off a hard charging Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell, and Oakley Johns. The Delaware double file restart here in this Panama City Cycles caution flag period. We will come back to the green flag next time by the second running Dale McDowell. Had the choice of inside or outside lane. He chose the inside, which puts Oakley Johns on the outside. Joseph Joyner led the first 23 laps of the season at Alltech, but has not led a feature race since. He's the series leading leader for heat race wins here in Dirt Track Bank heat race action. He'll bring this field back to green with five laps remaining. 
It'll be halfway down this time by. Oakley John's going to have a run on Dale McDowell down the back straightaway. Move Oakley in the second. Sam Seawright's coming with him. Seawright's on the outside of the racetrack. McDowell knows he's got to try to find a way to slide up there and take that line away, which he does as they come off of turn four, halfway down here in dirt track bank race number two. Christian Hanger going to bypass Sam Seawright for the transfer position. Seawright going to fight hard on the outside. You got to feel like he knows this place. OZ1. Oh, Winger, or Hanger rather, shuts the door. Christian Hanger shut the door on Seawright. He's got fourth momentarily. Seawright's not going to give up. The battle for second also heating up as now Dale McDowell looks underneath Oakley Johns. Johns off the pace a bit off of turn four, allowed McDowell to get back by. And now here comes Christian Hanger. Hanger's not content with fourth. He wants third from Oakley Johns as he can slide up in front of Oakley. White flag is out for Joseph Joyner. He'll take the white flag. Dale McDowell second comfortably. The battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Last shot for Sam Seawright. He'll pull under Oakley Johns. He'll have the transfer. Joyner wins. Heat race number two. McDowell second. Hanger third. And at the line, Sam Seawright going to take the fourth and final transfer position here in Dirt Track Bank. Heat race number two. What a heat race that one there was as these drivers, as these drivers are fighting hard to get into this show. Oakley Johns, he fell off the pace there as they were coming to the white flag, which allowed uh, Hanger to get by. And then he gave up the spot to Sam Seawright. Your fourth and final transfer is Sam Seawright out of Fort Payne, Alabama. Christian Hanger finishes third. Dale McDowell finishes second and collecting his fifth heat race win of the season with the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series. It is Joseph Joyner. Joseph Joyner in the 10 car will head to the Jericho Transmissions redraw. Here's Chase Schaefer there on your, on your screen. Good to have Chase. Smile, Chase, you're on camera. Give us a wave. Watching there on HuntTheFront.tv. You see the uh, official photographer. JCM Motorsports entry of Will Harrington. Heat race number three. Boy, we got a good one here. Good heat race here. Starting inside of row number one. Out of Winfield, Tennessee, the 2018 World Outlaw Champion, Mikey Marler. Mike Marler in the 157. Peyton Freeman in the F1 car. We'll start alongside out of Commerce, Georgia. Second in series points is Josh Putnam in the 212. The point leader, Will Harrington, starts alongside in the 19M. Matt Cooper in the 10C, Scott Cook in the 13. Grayson Brewer in the 44, Donald Johns in 66, Dallas Miller in 33, and John Henderson, after a flat in qualifying, starts shotgun on the field. Boy, the front row is good. The second row may be even better. With the words they had after the feature and in victory lane, last time we were here, Keep your eyes on Will Harrington and Josh Putnam. Mike Marler brings dirt track bank. He race number three to green, and we are three wide for second already. What a move by Harrington. Up the racetrack goes Freeman as Marler leads the field. Off of turn two, we stay green down the back straightaway, and now I believe the caution flag will fly. Race director Todd Hutto in the room next to, uh, next to us here in the announcer's booth at Duck River saying he did not like that start. I don't think he was too uh, too thrilled. All right, we'll get one to go this time by. I was listening to see who he charged that on. Uh, I'm not sure if he thinks Marler fired a little early there, if he just didn't like the way the second row shaped out there. But nonetheless, we'll try it again. Dirt track bank heat race number three. Mike Marler, Peyton Freeman, Josh Putnam, and Will Harrington. Man, what a what a heat race this one here is. Lights are blinking. Lights go down. Heat race number four, be ready. And then following heat race number four is factory stocks and pure pony. Green flag is in the air. We are underway. Mike Marler leads heat race number three to turn one. Peyton Freeman with a better start this time. Going to fight on the outside. Boy, that's pushing as high for the racetrack. One car spins off the of turn two. And the caution flag is out for Matt Cooper. Matt Cooper with the right rear damage as uh, he may have had a little help getting around down there at the bottom of turn number two. Ronnie Cooper, trucking and dirt work, 10 car, spins. Has a little bit of right rear damage. They'll get everybody back in their spot, get them doubled up. Heat race number four, be ready. Panama City Cycles, the official sponsor of the caution flag. Yep, there we got a little turnaround there, a little shot in the shorts there from 
the 44 of Grayson Brewer, but I don't think there was anything intentional there. Just everybody kind of getting stacked up there on the bottom of turn two on the start. And maybe the third time will be the charge for heat race number three. Lights are out. Marler, Freeman, Putnam, Harrington, Cooper, and Cook. Brewer, Johns, Miller, Henderson. Green flag in the air. Heat race number three is back underway. Let's see if we can complete a lap this time. Mike Marler says, I hope so, because he's led them off of turn two every time. He'll do so yet again. Here is the battle for the third position already as Marler leads lap number one. Peyton Freeman second. You're watching Will Harrington and Josh Putnam. Scott Cook has outside looking in. Going to put a little pressure on your second place in points, man. That is Josh Putnam. Cook is fifth. Wants that fourth spot that Putnam holds. Again, these drivers know this is a tough place to race around. You've got to make up every spot you can. Why, do it in the heat? Why not do it in the heat race rather than the feature? Marlon, Freeman. Harrington right there on Freeman. He'll look underneath. The battle for second. Off of two. As four laps will be complete this time. Marler is stretching the lead here. As he has quite the advantage over this second place battle that you're watching on your screen. 1.9 seconds in a four lap distance so far for heat race number three. Five laps on the board. Marler continues to lead. Harrington's trying to put some pressure on Freeman, but that top side is just blistering fast. Josh Putnam rides in fourth. You see the battle there between Cook and Cooper for fifth. They are uh, several car lengths behind Josh Putnam. And the white flag will go in the air for Mike Marler this time by. racing all over back in the pack with the top four have spread out and said uh, y'all have at it we're going to the deep fried 75 mike marler wins heat race number three peyton freeman second will harrington third josh putnam will finish fourth outside looking in will be the 13 of cook the 10 of cooper donald johns in the 66 grayson brewer in the 44 finishes eighth john henderson comes home ninth and dallas miller in his first as he's got some problems around in turn two and so does Henderson there in turn four. So he had, uh, Alice Miller's got some problems around over in turn two. Henderson. Henderson's going to go uh, check on Dallas and say, hey, man, how you doing? Hope you're doing all right. And uh, away he goes. So good sportsmanship there from these two drivers checking on each other after that, uh, after that race. But uh, all joking aside, nonetheless, some damage on both of those cars. And, Obviously, Henderson believes that, uh, that, da that Dallas Miller was the cause of that. Again, Miller out of Hamilton, Ohio. That was actually his first ever race in a super late model as he qualified last week at Thunder Hill, uh, but broke in qualifying and was unable to make the call the rest of the night. He's a modified racer from Ohio, Hamilton, Ohio. Races around the Mola Raceway Park and up in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. And was looking forward to his first actual lapse of competition. He looked good here last night in practice. He was one of the drivers that was here. Again, not all 20 super late models that were here took time. About 18 of them took time at one point during the night. But uh, the drivers that had transponders, he was consistently faster than all of those, Joe. Yeah, Travis, he had a, he had a really good night on a track that was both extremely fast, yeah. but it had its problems, too. It rutted right. up on us a couple of times, so... Uh, if, if you could, if you could make some some speed here last night, you were doing something a little special. Indeed, good to see. And you know, you talked about the, the track. We'll call it character. You know, there yeah. New new dirt, a lot of rain over the last week yep. or so in this facility. But uh, the staff here, Russell and Angie, and everybody involved here worked oh. last night. They've worked all day today. Uh, they had they had cars that were here. They said, hey, anybody want to come out and run the racetrack in today? They did some of that just so they could roll the racetrack down, till plow it up, and then re, you know, re-roll it down yeah. and re-water. Uh, so they've done a really good job. A little bit of rough spot there in turn one, a little bit at the top of three and four. But if you were here last night, uh, you'll gladly take this. Uh, oh, absolutely. For, for sure. That, so how you know, and, and I want to speak to that, Joe, while we have a minute. 
One thing I've noticed is is I hadn't been here in a long time until July. I come here in this place facility wise, amazing, the difference. Yeah. But then from last month to this month, the difference, right? Yeah. We've got new lean tos back here for the souvenirs, you know, so people can shop in the shade. You've got new amenities around the racetrack. They've added uh, bleachers. Glad they did that because Absolutely. y'all are asking people to, to squeeze, squeeze down, in. squeeze yeah. in. Uh, but uh, just a lot of effort. There's a lot of effort and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of effort and a lot of hard work going into the Duck River Raceway Park. Well, that's one thing that you got to know about uh, Angie and Russell both, and that is this is. It's not just a business. This is a labor of love for them, and, and they, they do have a love for this facility, and it shows. Fourth and final heat race gets the one to go sign. Clarksville, Georgia's uh, – Cartersville, Georgia, rather. Tyler Millwood going to lead on the green. Trey Mills from St. Augustine on the outside of row one. Evan Ellis and Caden Mullinax, row two. Daniel Miller, Brian Rickman, Bo Slay, Chase Oliver, Jason Croft. Heat race number four, fourth and final. Dirt Track Bank Heat Race, the 2017 Ultimate Super Late Model Series champion, will lead this field to green. He's got the current Aces Renovation Rookie of the Year point leader. On the outside, it is Trey Mills. Oh, we're going to go three wide. I thought we were for a minute, but here comes Trey Mills to the inside of Tyler Millwood as Heat Race number four is going to complete lap number one. Crossover from Millwood. Trey Mills led that lap by one hundredth of a second, and around goes Tyler Millwood. Caution flag is going to fly in turn two. Oh, man, what a race we had there to lead lap number one, and Tyler Millwood goes for a spin over in turn number two. Chase Oliver collected, uh, among others. Man, oh, man, we had a good race going there. You see the damage on the Millwood plumbing, 31 car. We got a replay from Hunt the Front TV. They're side by side going into turn number one. Down the racetrack comes Trey. And uh, Tyler got on the brakes, and just the momentum carries him around there in turn two. As uh, I don't know if Trey thought he was clear, but obviously uh, Tyler was there and felt like he wasn't clear. So track crews are going to do what they can to pull the. Then you see the Duck River Raceway uh, track official alongside the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series official there trying to get that left rear clear. 31 of Millwood was the caution. He brought out the caution. He, sh I believe, will go to the tail. They've already got the double file lineup formation, Delaware or Dixie double file lineup. Pure ponies and factory stocks. Factory stocks are next, pure ponies. And then Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series B main cars from Heat Race 1 and 2. You need to be getting turned around. Heat race one and two B main cars. You need to be getting turned around, gentlemen. You won't be. Uh, there'll be a couple of heat races between you and the uh, the heat, uh, heat race in the B main, rather. So guys, get turned around. Got a lot going on here in the tower. A lot uh, happening in the pit area. We are doing everything we can to get as much of this race in as we possibly can. As we do know, uh, weather in the area, weather is approaching. But B main cars, you need to be getting turned around. Heat race one and two, Group A B main cars. For B main number one, you need to get turned around here, guys. Trey Mills, T Evan Ellis, Caden Mullinax, Brian Rickman, Daniel Miller, and someone is uh, showing up as a uh, as our favorite missing data. Maybe Tyler Millwood having to go to the tail. We'll see. We'll see when they refresh the scoring system. Nonetheless, we're ready to come back to green with one lap complete, seven laps to go. Trey Mills going to leave this field to green here in our fourth and final Dirt Track Bank heat race. Evan Ellis in second. Mullinax and Brian Rickman side by side for the third and fourth position. Mullinax, Rickman, and then looking on the outside coming is Daniel Miller. Miller going to make that a three-wide battle for the transfer spot. And, oh, Rickman, whoa, Bo Slade had to get on the binder. So did Millwood. Rickman went from top to bottom trying to find a way around. Chase Oliver slides up into the fourth position momentarily. Miller takes it as Bo Slade slows at the top of turn number four. And the caution flag comes out here with three laps complete. Panama City cycles caution flag as Bo is pointed to the right. He says, hey, I got to get out of here. The three trades consultants, Randy Polk Holmes, car number two out of Milton, Florida, is headed out of here. They'll get the lineup straight as quickly as we can, and we'll be ready to go back racing with three laps scored here in Dirt Track Bank heat race number four. Trey Mills, Evan Ellis, Caden Mullinax, Daniel Miller, Chase Oliver, Brian Rickman, 
Tyler Millwood and Bo Slay. But the caution came out and also Jason Croft there tagging the tail of the field. All right. One to go sign this time by as uh, back on the racetrack comes Bo Slay. You got the lineup ready. Trey Mills led the first three laps here. Wants to lead the last five in this eight-lap heat race. Heat race victory, no stranger for Trey Mills here at Duck River. He won it. Back in July, his heat race after setting fast time, led the first 12 laps of the feature, hit the Ute tire at the bottom. That may be why he's run the top so far. Green flag is back on the way. Battle for second between Evan Ellis and Caden Mullinax. Chase Oliver is there. It's now a three, four car battle. Oh, up the racetrack in front of Millwood. Millwood is just trying his best. He's got a fast race car, uh, but these guys in front of him are making it difficult. Now, Daniel Miller moves into the fourth spot, and Brian Rickman, he moves back into that top four. He does not want to have to go to a B main. I don't blame any of these guys. We got a fast racetrack here, and it is hard to go from the back to the front on a high speed racetrack like this. Uh, they are racing all over it as they come off the track. Trey Mills leads on the fifth circuit. There'll be six laps complete this time by Evan Ellis is second. Caden Mullinax in the battle for the transfer is in turn three. Daniel Miller's on the outside. Brian Rickman from Columbus, Mississippi is on the bottom. And they continue to complete laps, and Miller slides across in front of Mullinax. Oh, what a move there. He said, I got to go, and here comes Brian Rickman. Rickman's going to use that top side, see if he can get around Mullinax. White flag is in the air for Trey Mills, and the caution flag is out of Panama City Cycles. Caution flag here in their track bank heat race number four. And being told debris at the top of turn number two. I see it there. Debris there, up there at the top of turn number two. See how the uh, running order shakes out. There it is. The HuntTheFront.tv production crew showing us there. And those of you at home, the debris at the very top. Officials will head quickly to get that. We'll get ready to get the lineup set. Trying our best to get this uh, heat race in here. You know, in the world of asphalt racing, we would tell you that's up high and out of the groove. <laughs> I have learned. Not here. <laughs> as I said, I've learned there is yeah. no out of the groove yeah. at this place. That, that is the groove tonight for sure. The top line is the fast way around. But, you know, we saw that in, uh, we saw that in July. The top was really fast early. And uh, then by feature time, everything had kind of evened out. And yeah. we had a killer racetrack here. Well, and that's the thing about uh, some of the work that they've done here in the last couple of years, especially with this new turn one and turn two. And that is, you talk about one groove racetracks, two groove racetracks. This is literally a four groove racetrack in the corners, and that's that's something I've never seen before. Yeah, and, and you know, I was saying earlier on the broadcast that the banking here is deceiving. This is a very high banked racetrack. Uh -huh. I'm looking here on the monitor in front of me that the, that everybody at home is seeing, and if you've seen videos, you're like. That's not that high, bank. It is. Yes, it is. It is. All right, here we go. Single file restart, green, white, checkered here on heat race number four inside of the two-to-go mark. Brings us a single file restart, and here we go. Look at Millwood up the racetrack. He'll try to get a run and see what he can do. Down the front straightaway, he's picked off Rickman. Oh, up in front of him went Daniel Miller. Here he comes. That's going to allow Rickman to get back by there. It's a three-car race for the transfer. It may be a four-car race. White flag is in the air as Trey Mills is going to take it. Evan Ellis, Caden Mullinax, and who is fourth? It's Daniel Miller there at that on that lap as we've got one more time around this racetrack to settle it. Up the racetrack goes Rickman. That's going to slow down Miller. Open the door for Millwood. He'll put it to the bottom. Out of turn number four, Mills, Ellis, Mullinax, and Rickman, your top four. Will transfer to the feature dirt track bank heat race number four. It uh, was interesting to say the least, but Trey Mills picking up his third heat race win of the season. Evan Ellis second, Caden Mullinax third, Brian Rickman comes home fourth, Tyler Millwood, Daniel Miller. Boy, what a race uh, Rickman, Millwood, and Miller had there on the last couple of circuits. Chase Oliver, Bo Slay, and Jason Croft, the way they finish. Dirt Track Bank Heat Race number four. So factory stocks and pure ponies should be next. Super late model B-Main cars, we need you turned around as quickly as possible. Super late model B-Main cars, get turned around. B-Main one, if you were in Heat Race one and two and didn't transfer, head to the staging lanes. They will have the uh, lineups posted down there as quickly as possible, but don't be waiting around for the lineup. Get, get to the staging lane and be ready for those B-Mains, guys. Joe? 
And we're ready to go, should be, with uh, more of the local show. Time for the NMC, NMCR LLC Pure Ponies. John Nick's coming back to join me here. As you've really had a good time just being outside watching these cars tonight, man. You're having a ball. I'm thoroughly enjoying this, Joe. <laughs> it's been amazing to see these guys get around this track. And I cannot wait to see all 24 cars out there getting it done. Yeah, we're going to go local racing now, Joe. Factory stocks are out there. Well, you're right. I got one race ahead too quick while I was looking. I'm glad you're here to keep me straight. You know, this is probably one of my favorite classes. Oh, yeah, know, absolutely. Boys, so you got to love this. And there's, uh, there's a bit of a rivalry one or two in this bunch. To keep your eyes on, uh, Jason James and the 44, Logan Hudson, the 54 of the front row. Trace Underwood, your points leader, starts third tonight in the 88. And already some beating and banging as they got that front row bouncing off each other off a of turn two. James and Hudson battling it out right off the bat. James able to get the first place spot. Hudson settling in the second. Trace Underwood right there in third. Two laps done on this eight-lap heat race, and it's still the top three exactly as they say, as they started. But, John, look at that white 07 of Hazen Shire. I told you last week, he impressed me to death because he drove through this field, and he is at it again. He has definitely shown speed. Of course, right in front of him, Trace Underwood really had this recovered this year, this class. So, James able to hold him off for now. Here's the interesting point about that. Our paperwork actually says it's Josh Bondron in that 07 tonight. So, that would be a, a bit of a, a change. I'm not sure what's happening there. Oh, okay. Josh races here locally. So, holding down that four spot right now. Play ship in the 97 is fifth. Ron Dennis in the one is sixth. And it's Danny Warren and Jeffrey Beecham. As we come to the six lap mark, we'll see a white flag next time by Jason James. Seems like he has things well in order, at least for this heat race. But you know, these guys, they're not going to show a whole lot in the heat races around here. Yeah, you know, they're just trying to set their spot for the feature. By the way, James right there across the line, one lap to go. But yeah, not pushing too hard. Of course, you want to finish as far up as you can to get that better spot in the feature race. But as they work their way through three and four, it'll be Jason James taking home this heat win. Logan Hudson, Trace Underwood, Josh Bondurant, and Clay Ship, your top five. And that will take care of that heat race for us and bring up the NMCR Pure Ponies. Trying to figure out. I don't think we're going to have a B main for the Bubba's Bout Broke 602s tonight. So we'll be going straight from the Pure Ponies to the Hunt the Front Super Late model. So Hunt the Front guys, you definitely want to double check that B main lineup and get yourself in a position to be ready to rock and roll. Uh, there is potential, as we've told you. We've been honest all day. There's potential for a little bit of weather. But the more I look at the radar, the more I think we have a chance to maybe – avoid some things. I don't want to say too much because I'm afraid I'll jinx it. I think we got the old vortex effect working. Old DW talked about it. We get these cars rolling in the circle. And yeah, you're right, Joe. It got a little split right there in the action now. So uh, yeah. There uh, you yeah. Go. yeah. We'll just got keep our fingers crossed. We keep these cars rolling, get that vortex working. Yeah. Maybe it'll split and go right over us. So we've been blessed this year. By the way, the duck, I, yeah, the I, went, I went down and checked some things and it looks like, uh, the old ribs have gone really well. There's just a few left, mm. and, and, and we didn't get there in time, brother. I know it, man. I hate it because I know that barbecue's good. All right, so hey, here's Hazen Shire. We were okay. Talking about him. Now he's on the pole for this one. Here's how they'll go, guys. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, Joseph Richburg, is, uh, Cody Lovett on that fourth row, third row Trent Richardson, Taylor Richardson, and then uh, it's uh, Danny Bradford, Matt Dunn, 
and Joe Richburg and Hazen Shire in that H07. So out of turn four they come, and we are underway. We have talked about Hazen Shire and the speed that he has in that car. He immediately jumps to the front, takes hold of that point. Sliding in the second there. That is the 15 of Joe Richburg. Richburg making one of his first starts with us. The X of Matt Dunn uh, falling back a little bit. Is that Danny Bradford, the 58, who's moved around him to take over third? Uh, Matt ran really well a couple of weeks ago. Danny Bradford making some progress towards the front. Oh, got one going around. That oh. is the 53 car. That's Taylor Richardson. And yeah, that, those those cars look the same. That yeah. 53 Richardson and Richardson. So just a let's slow. Let's figure that one's a 53 and one's a 532. That's the 532. Okay. So that's Trent. How much you want to bet they're twins? <laughs> I would probably wager that. Be my guess anyway. Two laps into this eight lap eight race. You know, those cars are painted the same. You think, Joe, they've got four or five cars in four or five divisions, all the same yeah, part paint of that, scheme. And uh, they're, they're part really, of that Rory Lower group. That's exactly right. Exactly right. So we'll see if they can make their way toward the front as the race director gets this field lined back up. We'll go back racing here. Two laps in an eight lap heat race for the factory stocks. Well, here they come through four. Once again, we are under green. Shire with another good jump. Hazen just took off, and uh, that's what he's been able to do the last couple of weeks. Let's see what happens now. It's back again. The acts of Matt Dunn in front of Danny Bradford, the 58, as Joe Richburg sits quietly in that second spot, kind of riding the catbird seat right now, or Bill C. Peters used to call it. He's in the rocking chair. Hey, I'll tell you what, Matt Dunn, that impressive in that X car, has made his way toward the front, uh, up toward the end of that third spot. Danny Bradford be down there trying to get by him, but impressive so far to see Matt up there in third. So it's Shire, Richburg, Dunn, and Bradford, your top four. Battle is good right now for fifth. If you look right behind them, it's the two Richardsons and the 18 of Cody Lovett. And Lovett takes that fifth spot for a second. <laughs> Team cars working on Lovett there. Oh, we got, oh, oh that's on, one of the brother. 53s. Yep. And I think that's the 53 of Taylor Richards. And that will be two times around for Taylor. Out a little squirrely out of four and got it sideways and couldn't quite catch it, but able to keep it off the wall and spin it down to the inside. So I was going to say, you know, that's the one positive of not having inside walls at this place is if you do spin it to the inside, you don't tear up as much. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It looks like he's going to need a push now and gets it fired back up. So Coming up in just a minute, that B main for the Hunt the Front group. As we get ready, that'll finish out setting the field for the deep fried 75. Boy, that's going to be a race. I cannot wait for that one. Man. And, uh, you know, the bad part is Travis Scott comes in. He does the announcing for the Hunt the Front folks. And, one, he's good. But, two, he doesn't mind it when we just kind of leave him alone. <laughs> you know, we, a lot of times you'll see some of the, you know, the local guys will hang around and help. No, we're, we're, we're both too big of a race I, fan I, right man, now. I'll tell you what, I am happy to sit out here and watch that race. It's awesome. But back to green flag. Shire right back out to the front. Now done in that X. Looking low. He was looking to make a move for second yeah. on Joe Richborg. Two laps to go when they get to the line. And I think uh, Joe may have figured out he's going to get some pressure. It's time to put some pressure on Hazen Shire. So the 15 now looking to see what he can do with the 07. They come out of three and four to the checkered flag. Shire's going to hang on for the win. Richborg second. Dunn, Bradford, Taylor Richardson, Trent, and Cody, Cody Lovett. Lovett. Yeah. All right. So, another good heat race there. That should do it for the factory stocks. That means up next are pure ponies. We do love the pure ponies.
Let's make sure that's what's coming up. Folks, bear with us. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. For those of you who are watching at home, wish you were here. But if you were, I'm not sure you'd have a place to sit down. Yeah, I'm glad y'all added those uh, <laughs> those 300 bleachers to the back straightaway. I just want to say real quick, uh, super late model, B-Main number one, Heath Hyman, Ryan Crane, Jason Riggs, Brad Skinner, Dalton Cook, Chase Walls, Oakley Johns, Jay Scott, Joe Denby, Hunt Gossam, Jamie Elam, Cameron Marler. Guys, need you in staging. You're next. How many of those will advance? Top three will transfer to the feature. Yeah, so we've got, we got some 11 good local cars, guys. top yeah. three. We've got some good local guys in there. <laughs> the pressure's on in that one. Oh, isn't it? man. All right, Joe, here we go with heat one for the pure ponies. Chris Miller, Cody Rogers on the third row. Brian Hale, Devin Boss. And then it's Ricky Bobby and Paul Teachout on the front row. And we are underway. Off and running down into turn one. And teach out, having more of a problem with Ricky Bobby on the outside than I think we thought he'd have. Look at these two guys. They are shadows as they come through three and four. Leaning on each other out of four. Ricky Bobby with the high side with the momentum. Teach out, sticks that nose down there. Not able to get it done. Give that lead to Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Boy, where have you heard that before? I don't know. Ricky I just like Bobby saying that. Yeah, Give the lead to Ricky Bobby. Yeah, I figured you did. <laughs> Good battle there. Third belongs solidly to the 16 of Brian Hale. Devin Boss of the 214 is still fourth. Chris Miller and the 11 and the one of Cody Rogers rounds out this field as it will set the starting lineup for tonight's 20 lap feature a little later on. Well, Ricky 15. Bobby might have that lead, Joe, but Paul Teachout is not going to let him get away. He is just dogging the rear bumper of that car, looking for a different line maybe to get around. As he looks down low, but again, Ricky Bobby with the momentum on the high side. Yeah, and the interesting thing, John, is uh, as Travis and I were talking about a while ago, you were standing here, you know, the, the high side sometimes starts out faster here, but these guys are all eating up that low line. Now, yeah. maybe that's an issue of they're pure ponies. There's less horsepower, et cetera. That it's, it's a better line for these cars, but uh, I think you'll start seeing some of these guys move up a little bit. Yeah, you notice that in every different class, they run different lines. And like I said, it's just a product of the cars that they're running. And these guys running a little bit lower and trying to find a fast way around during this heat race to maybe put something in the notebook for the feature later on. Coming to the white flag, Ricky Bobby. If you ain't first, you're last. Right now, he 